my very first job, gosh, I, when I was 14, I worked as a clown. I think painting is very psychological and I think uh, it forces you to, to confront who you are on a daily basis. I experiment a lot. I mean, for me, it's about finding something new. So you experiment all the time and that's why I fail so often, which is fine, you know. <laughs> In painting, you don't want to be too perfect. And I think it, it's the same at everything in life. You can formalize a painting and you can balance it out and whatever it is. But the interesting thing comes when you make a mistake, not when everything goes according to plan. You know, perfection is imperfect. I was the first gallery that gave me the structure to be able to do exactly what I want. I feel that Art I and I have a special type of trust. So if, you know, if I want to experiment, I'm allowed to do that. And poor Art I has to look at it and find a way to sell the stuff, <laughs> whether they like it or not. Artists generally like solitude when they're working. You need to be, to be with yourself and to understand who it is that you are. But at the same time, every now and then it's good to go to the studio next door and uh, discuss different things and they come and see your work and tell you how terrible it is or how amazing it is. If they say it's terrible, you actually believe them. If they say it's amazing, you start thinking twice. Because, you know, some artists can, like, you know, drive you the wrong path. I don't know if I should say that. <laughs> Very important difference between normal galleries and art I gallery is that uh, normal galleries sell paintings. Okay, art I gallery, they're selling an artist. They're fortifying that, that brand. Even if art I had to close tomorrow, the artist would be able to go out into the world and, and have a name and be recognized. And I think that's possibly the biggest difference between art I and other galleries that I know. Commitment is so important. And I think in your 20s, you kind of want to discover yourself and you're not quite there yet. You don't fully realize who you are. And it's, it's kind of unfair to, to criticize because you need to go through that to get to the other side. Be committed and, and be true to yourself. That honesty will come through that work. And it's that honesty that's the ingredient that's going to make your art meaningful to other people because people will see themselves in what it is that you have expressed. What item would I be lost without? Uh, I have no idea. I like being naked. So, you know, you kind of don't have any items on you. <laughs> I'm not that attached to my art and I, I, I feel honored when people actually purchase my art because that's, that's the end of the process. A work of art should speak for itself. Okay, at the beginning it's a reflection of who I am and what I want to say, but I change. And that work of art takes an identity of, of, of its own. I'm very happy when, when, when it does sell, and I, I think that's the end of the journey as far as you as an artist is concerned. I'm the happiest that I've ever been, and it's that way largely uh, because of our time and the love that I feel from everybody here. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. When you love, you just want to give love back, right? So it's, it's an all big, hippie, happy family. <laughs> the 
discover your practice in five words. I want to be poignant and uh, I'm not quite sure that I can be in five words. <laughs> okay, I think um, a discovery of the self, a discovery of the self. 